Okay, good. So we're recording now. And then folks, I'm now going to share my screen and we'll get going. There we go. Okay, so MWD 101, who is the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California and why do we care? Metropolitan Water District of Southern California is a regional wholesaler that provides water for 26 member public agencies to deliver either directly or through their sub agencies to nearly 19 million people living in Los Angeles Orange, Riverside, San Bernardino, San Diego, and Ventura counties. The district imports water from the Colorado River in Northern California to supplement local supplies and helps its members develop increased water conservation, recycling, storage, and other resource management programs. MET owns and operates a water system including the Colorado River Aqueduct, 16 hydroelectric facilities, nine reservoirs, 819 miles of large scale pipes and five water treatment plants. Four of those treatment plants are among the 10 largest plants in the world. In fact, Metropolitan is the largest distributor of treated drinking water in the United States. The district imports water from the Feather River in Northern California and Colorado River to supplement local supplies. It also helps its member agencies develop water recycling storage and other local resource programs to provide additional supplies and conservation programs to reduce regional demands. MET was one of the first wholesale water agencies in the United States and it is currently the largest. So we follow and sometimes we target MET because they are some of the biggest funders and proponents of the Delta Tunnel, a project that would devastate the ecosystems of the Delta region destroying the way of life for Delta residents and tribes. Oh, sorry, we've got some folks in the waiting room there. Okay, if you're just joining us, we are recording and um, we're, we just got started. So, um, Sorry, I was saying that the reason why we are following MET and why we care about what they're up to is because they're some of the biggest proponents of the Delta Tunnel. And that's a project that would devastate the ecosystems of the Delta region, destroy the way of life for Delta residents and tribes in Northern California and waste 16 to $40 billion and then not even produce a reliable source of water. MET has board members on the tunnel's construction authority and they're the agency with the biggest portion of funding. And then they regularly promote the need for a tunnel, unfortunately. The Metropolitan Water District of Southern California was established by the California legislature in 1928 through the Metropolitan Water District Act. The primary purpose, oh, there we go, big crowd now. Hi folks, if you're just joining us, we just got started. Uh, the primary purpose of the act was to construct and operate the 242 mile Colorado River Aqueduct. The Metropolitan Water District Act also authorizes Metropolitan to levy property taxes liber I'm sorry, liberty, levy property taxes within its service area establish water rates, impose charges for water standby and service availability, incur general obligation bonded indebtedness and issue revenue bonds, notes and short-term revenue certificates, execute contracts and exercise the power of eminent domain for the purpose of acquiring property. So that's kind of a big one. And sometimes we talk about the property taxes and the water rates, those are things that they update pretty regularly. So those are things we like to fight when possible. 
um, and we'll talk about that more later on. At the same time as the Metropolitan Act, Congress passed the Boulder Canyon Project Act authorizing construction of Hoover Dam, which then provided power to pump water to Southern California. At first, the goal was to supply a secure for a I'm sorry, secure a supply from the Colorado River for the fast growing region. And that was the proposal that was approved by voters in Los Angeles and Orange counties in 1931. And then about a generation later, with a lot more growth on the horizon, Met helped to secure, sorry, secure a supply from Northern California with statewide voters approving the construction of the state water project in 1960. Met is governed by a 38 member board of directors representing each of the district's 26 member agencies. Each member agency is represented by one or more directors based on the assessed property valuation of its jurisdiction. Again, so that's the, the assessed property valuation of its jurisdiction. So Los Angeles has the most property um, that's valued at the most amount of money. So that's why Los Angeles gets the most amount of delegates to their board. Generally, in terms of our purposes, the delegates to LA and San Diego have voted the way we prefer on most actions while delegates from Orange County and Inland Empire have not, but that's not always the case. Um, for example, leading up to the December 8th, 2020 vote to fund the next phase of planning for the Delta Conveyance Project a little more than half of the board members had told us they were going to vote against funding it. Then Met General Manager and his staff gave the board four options. One, to put 75 million into the project so that they could also cover Kern County's portion, to pledge only 59 million or about 47% for just their own portion, to abstain from deciding until a later date or not to fund the tunnel at all. Faced with the four options now and with the support of the tunnel by LA Mayor Eric Garcetti, our allies could not get enough support for a no vote. So then they chose to fund at 59 million rather than the 75 million that the tunnel supporters were going to push for. Um, and then I'm also gonna add that after that December 8th vote, uh, General Manager Jeff Keitlinger set out a, pr a press release declaring that the vote allowed for $161 million um, $161 million pledge of funds over four years, which is not what they had indicated in the vote that it was only supposed to be for two years. Um, he didn't respond to our letters regarding this overstep. So it's something we're gonna be revisiting um, at the next vote. The current general manager of MET since 2006 is Jeff Keitlinger, who manages their approximately $1.8 billion annual budget. He's been a champion of the Delta Conveyance Project since its inception or since its previous forms. Keitlinger acknowledges that we are in a permanent drought. And while he supported a recycled water plant, he still supports a Delta Conveyance because he sees it as part of a stronger portfolio. He also acknowledged that tribes need to have a seat at the table in decision-making but this is not something we've actually seen him take action on. He was at the helm of Met during the duration of alleged harassment of employees from various supervisors and coworkers, as well as during an employee suicide. These tragedies came to light over the last year through reporting by the LA Times. And I'm sorry, that reporting was the first time the board of directors had actually learned of the employee suicide. An investigation into Met staff conduct and handling of these injustices is still underway. Mr. Kreitlinger announced his plan to retire in spring of 2020, and he will do so sometime soon, really soon, when the next general manager is sworn in. So Met's local resource programs. Met supports the development and use of recycled water and recovered groundwater by providing incentives to local agencies through the local resources program. This is a program that we are always championing and we always say, you know, put more money into this. This is a great program, continue funding these things. MET encourages innovation by providing competitive grants through the Innovative Conservation Program. They address regional funding for actions that reduce barriers to future water resource production through their Future Supplies Action Funding Program. 
The LRP provides funding for the development of water recycling and groundwater recovery supplies that replace an existing demand or prevent a new demand on METS imported water supplies, either through direct replacement of potable water or increased regional groundwater production. MET has authorized research funding for a stormwater for direct use pilot program and a stormwater for recharge pilot program. These programs are intended to encourage the development, monitoring and study of existing new and existing stormwater projects by providing financial incentives for their construction or their retrofitting and their monitoring and reporting costs. MET is also implementing a second round of the Future Supply Actions Funding Program to reduce barriers to future local groundwater, recycling, stormwater, and seawater desalination supply development. The ultimate goal of the program is to help the region to adapt to future uncertainties, uh, but I do want to note that Sierra Club does not support seawater desalination unless there is truly no other alternative, but we do support brackish water desalination. So the IRP, the Integrated Resources Plan is MET's long-term plan for water sourcing in different scenarios. The board has an IRP committee to oversee its progress. The first plan was written in 1996 and it's updated every five years. The plan acts as a guide for determining which projects to support. The IRP accounts for different scenarios which are based on different drivers or impacts. So for example, what would water availability be like if Southern California's population grew by 30% or if it shrunk by 30%, if the drought got worse or if we get some wet years, what would happen if we lose infrastructure due to earthquakes, those kinds of things. The IRP has been delayed by several months and it's still in the phase of looking at different drivers and determining values. So things like do they wanna frame the IRP as relying on no water storage whatsoever, only like on the kind of water that they can acquire over a year? Or do they wanna look at it as, okay, well, we might have to dip into our water storage at some point. Those are the sort of value um, values that they're determining right now, um, as well as the different drivers and things like that. We're following this process because these assumptions will help the board determine whether or not they should support the Delta Tunnel. Unfortunately, in their last meeting, a panel of expert scientists said that the nature of climate change is why they should support a Delta conveyance, that because we'll see less snow, which would become rain, they would wanna capture it right away in the beginning of winter, so they support um, a Delta conveyance. But the Sierra Club and our allies know that capturing large amounts of water and thus yeah. reducing the flow of water throughout the Delta is exactly what causes the challenges that the Delta is facing. Um, I'm just gonna ask if folks can mute themselves. That would be great, thanks. So besides the IRP committee, one of the committees we are most concerned with is the Bay Delta Committee. It usually consists of reports to the board members from the Department of Water Resources, which is the state agency that is trying to build the tunnel. This coupled with the staff presentations approved by Jeff Keitlinger means the committee and board members usually only see a perspective that is pro-tunnel. The committee oversees funding for the region, which most recently went to research on subsidence issues. They receive reports on the health and the status of the Delta waters, um, Met actually owns several islands in the Delta, which we have been told are currently leased for cattle grazing, but would probably be used to store muck during tunnel construction. And muck from, that's from muck from over 100,000 truck trips that would be needed to build that pipeline, unfortunately. So Met is the water agency with the biggest portion of funding for the Delta conveyance project. They were also supporters of the Twin Tunnels or California Water Fix in 2018. This project has also been known as the Bay Delta Conservation Plan and the Peripheral Canal. In 2018, while promoting the California Water Fix, the last iteration of the Delta Tunnel, MET advocated to change its state water, proje state water project contract to provide that water fix costs be billed as transportation rather than supply related, which meant that those folks who live further away, like in San Diego, would have to pay more to transport the water to their residents, a lot more. 
So now the tunnel would be a waste of 16 to $40 billion, which could be used to fund local sustainable water projects that they're gonna have to fund in the future anyway, considering the state of the future under climate change. So the meat and potatoes, the juicy stuff. Jeff Keitlinger announced in spring 2020 that he wanted to retire, but would see met through the pandemic. We heard that he wanted to join the Biden administration, but um, everything that came out in the newspaper this year didn't really allow that to happen. Met set a formal plan in place for hiring the next journal manager, which was voted on last summer. Sierra Club and our allies were vocal that Met needed to be transparent and it needed to include the public in the process. We made hundreds of public comments and sent letters to that effect. In November, Met's hiring firm, the Hawkins Company, held a forum to collect feedback from employees and the public on what characteristics we want to see included in the job description and, the, and in the actual candidates. And some of you participated in that and that's fantastic. Then in January, Chairwoman Gloria Gray appointed new members to the executive committee who would be charged with narrowing down the candidate pool for general manager. Seems like she chose those she's closely aligned with and other board members complained that she did not choose enough members of color or that represented enough diversity in agencies. So rural um, agencies, urban, big, small, rich, uh, less prosperous, you know, not enough diversity in the types of backgrounds that were there. Two of those vocal board members found themselves quickly removed from their seats. And then some back and forth followed over the next few months. It, it was kind of messy. The hiring process really wasn't very transparent. There was no announcement to the public about when interviews would begin, how many applicants there were, where they were in this process, et cetera. So last week, the LA Times published an article revealing that the board voted to approve Adele Haja Khalil, but that there is an effort to derail him before the vote on his contract on June 8th. Several directors, I'm quoting, several directors who supported Haja Khalil have gotten calls from their colleagues questioning whether he's really the best choice, according to multiple people familiar with the behind the scenes struggle. A memo distributed to the board by the agency's human resources director uh, after the vote referred to Haja Khalil only as the leading candidate saying he still needs to go through a background check, review of his references, discussion about pay, blah, blah, blah. So a source this week revealed that the general manager of the Municipal Water District of Orange County, or MoDOC, did a Personal Records Act request on Mr. Haja Khalil in an attempt to exacerbate the allegations against LA Sanitation. The city of LA had already told the board that the allegations never once mentioned Mr. Haja Khalil. There was one employee who brought a lawsuit against him for alleged retaliation and racism against Chaconix people, but the lawsuit did not actually include any interactions between them, as in they never actually spoke to each other, it seems. So the union where Mr. Haja Khalil currently works, SEIU Local 721, and then Mets Union, AFSCME Local 1902, both congratulated him on his win and are excited about him as a choice as well as Mets Women's Caucus. And those are that's the group that uh, blew the whistle on the abuse at Met. So he does have the support of employees, both his current employees and then his next future employees should he get this seat. The board members supporting Mr. Haja Khalil called out the MODOC board members and their general manager. And then Sierra Club today sent out a press release on the same issue. The LA Times article indicated that Jeff Keitlinger was also part of the opposition to Mr. Haja Khalil. So in short, Mr. Haja Khalil is facing an uphill battle in the award of his contract on June 8th. To be fair, a little bit about Paul, Pat Mulroy, his, um, the other leading candidate. Um, so to clarify, he won in terms of the weighted votes. She's in second place in terms of votes, um, it sounds like the opposition wants to prevent him from getting his contract and then she would be the second place winner. So uh, Mrs. Mulroy oversaw a 45% reduction in per person water use in Southern Nevada between 2000 and 2014. And she struck several deals to save water for dry times in part by returning 
treated wastewater to Lake Mead that can be retrieved later. She was great at making deals or absorbing other water agencies in Nevada and in neighboring states. Las Vegas more than doubled in population since she took over at Southern Nevada Water Agency, and she was good at conserving water in programs like Cash for Grass, but her solution to Lake Mead was to build a third straw to reach even deeper into the reservoir. Mrs. Mulroy championed a 300 mile pipeline to rural Eastern Nevada that environmentalists said would cause much harm to several ecosystems. So this and her relationships with Jeff Keitling or MoDOT tell us that she would absolutely champion the Delta, Pro Delta Tunnel Project if she were to be chosen. Mr. Haja Cleo, with 32 years of public service left public service under his belt, led the award-winning LA Integrated Water Resources Plan and the 2041 Water LA Plan. A stakeholder-driven integrated water planning led the way to the implementation of the ongoing large water recycling projects and stormwater capture efforts in the city of Los Angeles. He helped lead several successful water measures, including Measure W and Prop O stormwater measures that were overwhelmingly approved by voters in LA uh, County and the city. He led the resolution of the litigation over sewer system overflows, overflows, overseeing the creation of a world-class sewer system and reducing sewer overflows by more than 90% in the city. He has also led many climate adaptation efforts, including integrating shade, shelter, equity, and stormwater capture into active transportation projects. I think one of the most important things for us is that uh, upon becoming a finalist, he reached out to Sierra Club and he pledged to work together with us to find local sustainable solutions to climate change. He wants to put solar panels over the California aqueduct. He wants to work together with us to get state and federal departments to fund the water projects that we wanna see happen. He understands that the tunnel is an outdated and not a reliable source of water. So where does that leave us now? So June 8th is the vote from Metropolitan's board on his contract. So he had already been selected on May 8th as the, the candidate um, that would be the next general manager. Now they just need to vote on the contract and if they wanna move forward. Um, because of what we're hearing that the opposition that the folks from Orange County Inland Empire uh, Jeff Keitlinger's buddies, that they are trying to derail him, that they're, that they're going to try to get enough votes to not give him his contract. So then they go back to duking it out between himself and Pat Mulroy. So we are um, advising people to call in and give a public comment in favor of Adele Aja Cleal. That would be this upcoming Tuesday, June 8th at 12 o'clock. This is the phone number you would call and that's the code you would give. And all you really need to say is that you're calling on behalf of agenda item 10-2 and you support Adel Haja Khalil as the next manager of Met. I think if you can't pronounce Haja Khalil, I'm sure they'll know who you mean if you just say Adele as well. If you can't make it, there, there's the email address if you wanna just shoot a quick line over to them saying that that's your support or you support Adele. Um, but if you do have the opportunity to call in, just mute yourself when you get on the line and then wait for them to call out the last four digits of your phone number and you'll get three minutes to speak. And then if you wanna keep listening, you can listen to the comments on the phone line or you can listen to the whole meeting um, at that link right there. So I'm going to stop screen share right now and then see if we have any questions. Okay. Um, hi, Billy. Go ahead. Can you, can you put that up again? Because I need to write the email again. Uh, actually, I'm going to send out this all this information to everyone on Friday. So you're going to get all of this plus extra talking points if you want to say a little more about why we support him um, or really anything else. I mean, you really only need to say that you support him, but if you if you want more talking points, we're gonna send you that, the links, the phone numbers and everything. So I'll put it up again, just um, after I can answer questions. because I wanna see some faces. 
And then Ginny, you asked, do callers need to be from the SoCal Met area? I think it certainly helps to hear from constituents that they represent, but also, I mean, this this affects everyone, right? The um, Met, they, they deal mostly with the Colorado River and the Delta region state water project water. And that affects, you know, the Delta, the Colorado River goes through at least six states and the Delta water um, that's from Northern California. Some of that comes from Oregon. So I feel like we're all affected by their decisions. I think everyone has the right to call in. Mark. So these um, rate payers in the Metropolitan Water District um, would be the ones that would be impacted with tax increases and our water rate increases, not the rest of the citizens of California, just? Kind of. There are, uh, I think, 42 water agencies that contribute to this Delta Tunnel. Um, they're called South of Delta water agencies. So for the most part, it's folks all south of there. It's in the Central Valley. It's Kern. Um, a lot of folks, but Met is the biggest chunk. They are going to pay uh, about 65% of the tunnel cost. So the bulk of it will be um, will fall on folks um, in the Met service area, for sure. Go ahead. And, and would the um, agricultural industry, which benefits from 80% of the water flow, be um, paying a proportionate amount for the amount of water usage um, that they would benefit from? Short answer is no. Um, kind of it, what we think is going to happen, we think that there's some like behind the scenes stuff happening that some folks, some water agencies would buy the water and then sell it back to farmers. Um, so maybe the wealthier farmers might end up paying even more money for water. Um, maybe not. Maybe they're going to get so much in subsidies um, and other things that the farmers end up paying less. Um, I think it's a little too early for us to tell right now, but probably not going to be fair, whatever happens. Christina, you're muted. Do we know if any of this is going towards fracking? And uh, I'm trying to remember, will the water be run through the regular California aqueduct? It no. will run through the aqueduct. Um, as for fracking, maybe. Um, Kern County, so Kern has um, a municipal water agency and then they have an agricultural water agency. The municipal one did not want to participate. The ag one, did, I believe they did, I'll double check that, but I believe they did decide to pay for it. So considering that most fracking happens in like rural parts of Kern County, I mean, probably. I, I don't know if I would put that in a published statement because it might be a little bit of a jump, but I think probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Having participated before in calling in to uh, the meeting when a really important vote was happening, the vast majority of people were in, uh, in favor of Sierra Club's position and they completely disregarded everything that was said. And so uh, where do you get your trust that it's going to make a difference if we show up? I think because this time we know we already had the numbers to get Adele voted in the first place. So it's really that the bad guys are just bad guys. The opposition is trying to change the minds of some of those people. Um, so we put out a pretty aggressive press release today about it. And um, we also sent a letter last week with 31 partner organizations saying, hey, we all agree that Adele is the way to go. I think that speaks volumes, knowing that he's got a lot of support um, from the community. That really helps. So they've already been seeing that. And then now if we just bombard them with phone calls and emails from the public as a whole, that should go a long way. I think that people who voted for him just want to feel confident in that choice that they made, that they made the right decision. 
And, you know, he's already gotten to the point where he's been voted in. This is just out of his contract. So is he going to be paid fair wages, things like that? Um, it's not as much of a fight as it would have been to just pick one of the two. So it's looking good for us. So what can we do between now and then? You can send an email now. Um, if you are able to call on Tuesday as well, that's fantastic. But um, I would send an email. If you want to tweet your support, I think that's totally fine. Um, if you want to put it on Facebook, I think one of the biggest things you could do is help us get the word out and get your friends and other folks to um, also join in and make a call that day or send an email now. That would be that would be great too. And you're, you're giving us all that information? Yeah, that's going to go to a huge blast um, of many thousands of people on Friday, but I will also give you all that information from that last slide again tonight. Any other questions? Good. This one actually ended up being shorter than I thought it was. So that's good. Um, just to catch folks up from the things we've done the last few weeks. Um, so we noticed everyone hates phone banking, except maybe Joe Coffey. She's a pretty great phone banker. So we, um, we changed it up a bit. And now once a month, we're doing Delta Tunnel 101 for folks that had never really heard about it so that they can get a, an overview uh, we will have another one of those tomorrow at two o'clock for anyone who wants to be there, but um, Wednesday nights are more popular. Then once a month, we have our Delta Action Committee Takers meeting, which is the one we had last week, which was a lot of fun. And that's where we send in emails, make phone calls, tweet, uh, do Facebook messages to the folks that um, that we're targeting. So in this particular case now, it's met about the general manager candidate, but it could always be something different. Every month these things change. Um, and then a lot of times it might even just be the board members as a whole saying, hey, don't vote for this tunnel. You're gonna hear from us a lot until the vote, don't do it. Um, and then we've also got strategy meetings, which is where everyone can kind of give some input on who do you think we should be reaching out to? Is there some new thing you think we should do? Maybe like a banner drop on a highway or a mural or really whatever kind of fun ideas you, uh, you have, we'll have those meetings too. And then if you've got ideas for other informational webinars, let us know, um, probably talk a bit about water rates and property taxes and kind of boring stuff like that. Um, but then also other water science things and engineering. So if there's anything, um, that folks wanna see, we can do that. Um, and I am gonna share the slide deck. I will share that slide deck, Jamie. Yeah. Um, any other questions? So if not, I, oh, and you know what? There was a request last week for a folder um, that everyone can have access to that will share all of these documents and agendas. And that's totally fine. We will do that. Um, and I'll share that with you. So tonight I will share with you the information from the slide. And then on Friday, you'll, you'll get again, the talking points and all this information again. So if there are no other questions, I'm going to go back to sharing that last slide that we had, um, but I can still hear you. So if you wanna say something, just uh, speak up. So will you send this slide out to us via email? Uh, email? Yeah, I'll send this slide to anyone who signed up for this uh, meeting tonight. So you'll all get to see that tonight. So right. since you have the context and then um, after that, I'll send the talking points and this information to everyone in our network on Friday. Um, Craig, you can just speak. Hi, Katie, thank you. Um, just curious, I saw the, the letter you sent out and obviously the one last Friday. And is there another one going out? Um, yeah, I think we're, on, on Friday? 
Yeah, we're going to send one more on Friday. That'll be the last letter. And I'm excited to say that um, there are there are tribes meeting right now, um, deciding if they want to add their tribal organizations to our letter as well. So that would be really cool. I know at least one tribe um, said yes so far. So that will be exciting. That's a really yeah. impactful. Yeah. And I'll also send you the logo from Surfrider South Bay. I was trying to get um, all of Surfrider to get on it, but um, we're having a little trouble contacting all those chapters. So I'll send you our logo and thanks for putting me on the letter. And um, this really is important. I hope, um, I know Gloria Gray personally pretty well. And she actually invited me to the MWD board retreat in Pasadena, which was a real interesting dynamic. I don't know how they get anything done with 38 directors. It's it's just crazy. But um, the rumor, of course, is she's going to resign from her chair position and um, over this. So that will be an interesting dynamic to see what happens. And um, yeah, I'm in all the West Basin meetings and actually was at the West Basin Board of Directors retreat uh, two weeks ago on Saturday. And it was my first in-person meeting in over a year. And there were 12 of them and one of me. <laughs> and uh, still had masks and six foot distancing. But the good news is um, there was only one side comment about D-cell, but a lot of talk. They had staff there doing presentations a lot of talk about expanding recycling so i it was i was totally surprised by that and of course gloria gray came in late and um actually walked by me and kind of backhanded me on the shoulder and said hey buddy and is that harassment so uh, <laughs> anyway um it's an interesting dynamic going on i do hope adele gets in uh, gets gets the money so to speak the contract, but I'm really surprised that she's taken the position she apparently has. Yeah, it's yeah that is a surprise. Um, yeah. Wow, well, I hadn't heard that she was interested in resigning, but um, interesting. I, I know a lot of people that would want to quickly take her seat, so. We'll yeah, see. that, that's the rumor du jour, so um, that got passed down through a couple of people, but um, it's just, you know, being an African American and her, I just don't get it. So it's just strange. It's been a strange journey. Yeah. How interesting. I would have loved to be a fly in the wall in that retreat. So interesting. Um, all right. I'm going to stop sharing this now because, again, I will send this information to folks later. Um, any other questions? Thomas, I saw you came in late, so I can um, catch you up if you like. Sure, that'd be helpful. Yeah. All right, if that, uh, there are no other questions, then I'm going to hang back to uh, catch up Thomas. But otherwise, have a good night, folks. I will send you all the information, and I look forward to hearing your voices on Tuesday. Remember, Tuesday, June 8th, 12 p.m. Um, so thanks so much, folks. I, I would be listening on your recap, Shatan.